Hey friends, Dr. Hampton here. And today we're unpacking a hot topic in the carnivore world. Do carnivores really need supplements? Some would say, just eat meat and you're good. And to be honest, for many of you, that's probably true. But just like in life and in medicine, there's nuance. It's not all or nothing. Some of us thrive with just meat, salt, and water. Others, they need a little extra support, and there's no shame in that. So in this video, we'll explore why most people don't need supplements on carnivore, and for the exceptions, who might need them and when, how to know what to watch out for, and what I personally do as a doctor on a carnivore diet. Oh, and let me know in the comments, do you take any supplements on carnivore? And where are you watching from? Let's start with the foundation. Meat is one of the most nutrient dense foods on earth. When you eat animal foods, especially a mix of muscle meat, organs, eggs, and seafood, you're getting vitamin A as retinol, B vitamins, especially B12, heme iron, zinc, selenium, omega-3s like DHA and EPA, creatine, taurine, carnosine, electrolytes like sodium and potassium. And not only are you getting these nutrients, you're getting them in a bioavailable form your body can actually use compared to plant foods, where nutrients are often locked up with anti-nutrients like oxalates and phytates. Animal foods are a nutritional powerhouse. So yes, for many people, especially if you're eating nose to tail, the answer is you probably don't need supplements. But the story doesn't end there. Here are three reasons why some people might still benefit from targeted supplements. Number one, you're not eating the full spectrum of animal foods. Just steaks and ground beef, that's great, but you may miss out on certain trace nutrients. Number two, your lifestyle, genetics, or environment increase your needs. Think stress, low sun exposure, past gut issues, MTHFR mutations, or even heavy exercise. Number three, you're experiencing symptoms. Fatigue, cramping, poor sleep, brittle nails, anxiety, these are clues. This isn't about fear, it's about awareness. So let's go through each of the most common nutrients that might need attention, especially if you're doing a more limited version of carnivore or not feeling your best. Number one, iodine, essential for thyroid metabolism and fertility, common in seafood, shellfish, eggs, dairy, and iodized salt. If you're dairy-free, seafood light, or avoiding iodized salt, you might be low. Symptoms of low iodine include fatigue, hair thinning, feeling cold or thyroid issues. Here's a pro tip. Add shrimp, cod, fish eggs, or even a small pinch of kelp flakes occasionally. Number two, vitamin D3 plus K2. Vitamin D comes from sunlight mostly, also from fatty fish, liver, and egg yolks. Vitamin K2 is in liver, egg yolks, and hard cheeses. Here's where it gets personal. As an African-American with darker skin, I naturally produce less vitamin D from the sun. So even though I spend time outside, I still supplement with D3 plus K2, especially during Chicago winters. Low D is linked to fatigue, low mood, poor immunity, bone loss, insulin resistance. If you don't get sun regularly or live far from the equator, you might consider testing your levels and supplementing seasonally or year round. Number three, magnesium and electrolytes. On low carb diets, you excrete more water and sodium. This flushes out magnesium and potassium too. Symptoms of low magnesium, muscle cramps, insomnia, eye twitches, anxiety, constipation. You may be fine just salting your food, but if cramping hits, try magnesium glycinate or malate, topical magnesium oil, or even magnesium bath flakes or foot soaks. They bypass digestion and can work wonders. Some folks also benefit from temporary electrolyte powders during adaptation or intense workouts. Number four, vitamin C. Here's the surprise. Your vitamin C needs drop on carnivore. Why? Less oxidative stress. Lower glucose, which competes with vitamin C transport. You're not constantly inflamed. Still, if you go ultra strict and feel easy bruising, bleeding gums, poor wound healing, or joint pain, 
is worth reassessing. Beef liver, kidney, and thymus all contain small amounts of vitamin C. That may be enough. Some people even do well with just rare meat or raw organ supplements if needed. Number five, folate B6 and methylation support. If your homocysteine is high or you have an MTHFR mutation, you may benefit from extra B6, folate, or B12 supplement. Most folks can get these from liver, egg yolks, and seafood. But if you've had gut issues or genetic variants, a methylated B complex might help. Always test before you guess. Number six, omega-3s, DHA and EPA. If you're eating only beef and avoiding seafood, your omega-3 levels may not be optimal. While grass-fed beef has some, it's nowhere near what's in sardines, salmon, mackerel, or cod liver. Low omega-3s can show up as dry skin, brain fog, inflammation, mood swings. Consider adding in seafood or taking cod liver oil or krill oil if you avoid fish altogether. Number seven, calcium, especially for postmenopausal women. If you're not eating dairy or small fish with bones like sardines and you're postmenopausal, bone health becomes more critical. Signs of concern, osteopenia on your DEXA bone scan, weak nails, muscle spasms. You don't need a calcium pill necessarily, but make sure you're getting enough through the bones and sardines, mineral water, or small amounts of bone meal or calcium rich organ meats. Pair calcium with K2 and D3 for absorption. Now let's do a quick recap. Who should consider supplements on carnivore? You eat mostly muscle meat, no organs or seafood. You live in a low sun area, are darker skinned or don't get outside. You're pregnant, breastfeeding, or postmenopausal. You're a hard training athlete. Think Dr. Paul Saladino, who's an avid surfer. You have gut issues, fatigue, or cramping. Your labs show deficiencies or imbalances, or you just don't feel as good as you expected on carnivore. None of these means you're failing. It means you're paying attention, and that's what real health looks like. Here's my approach simple and practical. Number one, food first. Get as much as you can from nutrient-dense animal foods. Number two, personalize. Your genetics, stress, and lifestyle matter. Number three, pay attention. Symptoms are data, not defects. Number four, test when needed, especially if you're experimenting long-term. Number five, use supplements wisely, not out of fear, but for targeted support. If you're thriving with meat and salt, awesome. But if your body's whispering that something's missing, don't ignore it out of dogma. The goal isn't purity, it's progress. And I'd love to hear from you. Are you taking supplements on carnivore? And if so, which ones help you feel better? Or which ones turn out to be unnecessary? Drop your answers in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and check out the video description for a playlist. Or check out the video on the screen. Or simply subscribe to my channel here. I thank you for watching and remember healing is a journey. Meat is powerful but you are the key. I'll see you next time.